Um, okay, I will start from uh, the, the, the actual title of my presentation, History, Memory and Resilience in British Italian Migrant Literature from La Savini to Ampia. I am sure that you have never heard about uh, um, uh, British Italian migrant literature and that you have never heard about uh, authors such as uh, Le Servini and, um, and Pia. Uh, this is not because, uh, um, uh, this is not because uh, you may have different uh, um, research interests, uh, but because this is a largely neglected area of study. Uh, starting from Terry Colpi's seminal, The Italian Factor, The History of the Italian Community in Britain, dating 1991, British Italian migrant studies are still mostly historical and sociological. So my presentation today, the one I'm going to deliver, is the product of the first comprehensive survey of the literary voices and works of this branch of British uh, migration literature. So that's why I'm so happy to, to share um, uh, these first results with you and I hope that you will give me some feedback at the end. Um, it is for this reason that I have divided my lecture plan into, uh, into three parts. First, I will give you an introduction uh, um, to British Italian migrant literature. Uh, so the, the authors I have found, uh, their works and uh, their general features. Of course, the core of my presentation will be topics and themes, memory, uh, history and resilience. I will draw my conclusions and I hope uh, that you will give me uh, some uh, advice, um, they will ask me in, uh, questions, that you will start a debate. Section 1, Intro to uh, British Italian Migrant Literature, Authors, Works and General Features. And this was quite, uh, I mean, the, absolutely the most difficult part in my research. Um, I have divided, I mean, I've, I've decided to organize the contents um, uh, um, on, uh, uh, in, in this table. Um, they, um, this table is divided into two parts, two pages, as you can see, and uh, um, uh, I have divided it into four parts. First, the names of uh, these uh, um, uh, uh, British Italian writers, where they are based, um, uh, uh, also the titles of um, their works and the literary genres they contributed to. Um, uh, um, as you will see, um, uh, uh, they, are from, uh, they are from Wales, from Scotland, from England. There is nothing from Ireland. The, um, uh, uh, the community, the Italian community in Ireland uh, is very limited. Um, uh, and uh, very small. Um, I am trying to find if there are any literary voices, but uh, so far what I found is uh, a project on oral history. So um, nothing literary, in fact. Uh, as regards uh, um, uh, um, uh, the, the, uh, this section on uh, uh, the author's works, as you can see there are uh, some authors who are probably more prolific and I'm talking about Scots Italian Mary Contini, who is based in Edinburgh, uh, but also Joe Pieri, um, who is a first generation uh, uh, immigrant and who was based in Glasgow. Um, uh, he is the most prolific writer. He started his career uh, as a writer very um, uh, late. Uh, he was 70, he had just retired when he started writing, but he was so prolific. And uh, he, um, uh, he really contributed to the relations between uh, um, the Italian community in uh, Glasgow and uh, the Italian community uh, in uh, Barga, where he came from. However, uh, let's have a look at the, uh, the genres. As you can see, uh, most of them, uh, most of these writings are family stories or memoirs. Um, there are just two plays by um, Scots-Italian Marcello Maristi and Anne-Marie Di Mambro. 
uh, they are both very popular and very um, very in, uh, um, highly reputed in uh, in Scotland. Um, uh, these are the two works that they wanted to dedicate to the uh, Italian uh, community they were part of, that they are still part of. Um, there is only one work of non-fiction, which is by uh, Joe Pieri, um, uh, Scots Italian, and um, a collection of short stories, always by uh, Joe Pieri. Anyway, as you can see, memory is uh, the main, uh, um, the main um, uh, field of uh, interest for 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 them. But uh, just to give you an idea of uh, where it all started, I wanted to um, uh, to, to to show you where the where the family um, were originally from and where they settled. Um, we are talking about 12 uh, authors um, uh, who have uh, um, uh, um, uh, who are of uh, um, uh, British Italian descent, and their families originally came from Southern Lazio near Rome. This is Rome, where uh, I am uh, pointing here. Um, but the, the, the area uh, where these writers and their families came from is actually the very south of Lazio. Then there is another centre, an important centre of immigration, which is in the north of Tuscany. And here is Florence, for example, where I'm pointing. And then no, it's in not pointing. So. It is not pointing. Okay. No, but you can point with your finger. Oh, okay. Yeah. I can point with my finger. It won't be easy for, for those who are recording, but... Okay, so here is Rome, and here is Florence, and Bologna is up there. I'm too short, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, just to give you an idea of the regions and the main cities that um, uh, probably... Um, uh, um, I'm talking about Bologna, not be so popular, but then it is quite an important city in Italy. And the, these um, uh, um, uh, little hamlets, uh, these uh, um, authors ca um, came from, uh, come from, uh, some of them died a few years ago, um, uh, are actually quite uh, unknown, apart from the fact that they are um, uh, um, remote. Um, from uh, the, the, the largest uh, um, uh, uh, urban centres. I went last summer just to visit them and to see what they were like, and they are absolutely enchanting. Um, it is a fascinating area, but of course I can understand that. In the 1860s, um, uh, it must have been difficult to live in uh, those agricultural centres. Anyway, uh, this is where they came from, where they come from, the majority of them. Uh, let's have a look at where they settled. Well, and where their stories are set. Um, England, um, of course, um, all migrants uh, first arrived uh, in, uh, uh, in London. And then, as regards uh, uh, Wales, uh, it's, it's not that the Italian community settled uh, all over the region, but just in the south, because it was richer and because it was um, uh, especially rich in mines, and that was the, the main economic resource. As regards Scotland, the main urban centres, which are Edinburgh and Glasgow, and I can say that three of them come from uh, um, come from Edinburgh and uh, um, uh, the, the, the rest the other two are from Glasgow Joe Pierre for example was uh, from uh, from Glasgow so um, uh, um, this is uh, uh, just to give you an idea of the geographical um, uh, uh, areas where they came from and where they settled um, what type of writers are they uh, most of them are non professional writers um, who wanted to share their past memories as immigrants. So that was their, um, their, their motivation. And I'll tell you what was the other motivation why most of them decided to um, keep their memories alive. They contributed to create a corpus of 17 works, which are mostly autobiographical and dedicated long sections to their experiences. 
or those of their families during the Second World War, and I will tell you why um, the, the, um, uh, the Second World War was a very, very dark period for the Italian migrant community in Britain. Um, as regards genres, we have seen novels, family stories, um, uh, uh, plays, and memoirs, uh, and poems. However, uh, from, a, um, uh, from a formal point of view, um, just like all um, uh, or most, the majority of uh, um, the migrant writings, uh, they, uh, I mean, the main trait, their main trait is hybridity. Uh, it is not just from a formal point of view because they combine so many different materials. So you have literary writing on, on the one hand, and then and then you have like, um, uh, for example, recipes um, of um, the the old traditional uh, regional cuisine in the areas. Um, of the areas where they came from, or um, uh, portions of their personal family albums, um, or even drawings and pictures. I mean, this uh, blend, this mixture of uh, materials is instrumental in making uh, these uh, people visible, because the idea of visibility or invisibility is at the core of their interest. And then, um, uh, language, of course, that's another level of hybridity, so that this corpus may be of interest also for those of you who may be interested in uh, language, in, uh, in English language. You can find, of course, standard English. Uh, there are also slang forms. Um, and there are also Italian words and short phrases which are not always correctly um, and this is because they're, um, they're not um, uh, Italian mother tongue. Uh, so the, 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 the type of uh, Italian that they, that they know and they, that they speak is something that they remember. Um, the way um, the way their the, uh, the, the families spoke and those families because of their level of education they spoke both dialect and uh, Italian generally dialect um, so regional words and phrases there's always um, a, a section uh, that I'm uh, um, I'm pleased to remember um, uh, in uh, um, Anne Pierre's uh, uh, memoir, Language of My Choosing, uh, it is a final section and it is a glossary of the, um, uh, of the, uh, the, the, all the expressions uh, in Viti uh, uh, that she used uh, throughout the narration and her translation into English, which is quite interesting. Anyway, is it possible to consider this uh, um, uh, a literary canon? I don't think so, but the reason why um, we should consider um, uh, these writings uh, and uh, um, the, the, the contribution uh, to, um, uh, um, uh, to uh, Britain as a multilateral community is that they provide uh, precious historical information, that they are linguistically hybrid, and that they have a strong interdisciplinary reserve, um, trait. So at a time when um, uh, research in our fields um, needs to be interdisciplinary, well, this is a, a, good, um, a good corpus to work on. This is my idea. Now, the, the, the actual core of, uh, of my presentation, topics and themes, history, memory, and resilience. I will start from memory. Um, as I said, so many of these works are actually memoirs. Um, memory is a key component of um, uh, migrant literary writings. Um, it actually represents the reason why most, um, uh, most British Italian authors decided to engage in writing, especially at such a um, uh, uh, late stage of their lives. Um, and this, is, this was for, for example, for Les Servini, who decided to write when he retired, the same for Joe Pieri, the same for Hector Emanuele. Um, however, memory played a very important role in the construction of their multicultural identities. Um, 
of course, uh, it is possible to, to cover lots of areas. Uh, um, uh, um, but on this occasion, I wanted to, um, to, to focus on the past family life, their marginal place in the public sphere, and then their experiences as internees during World War. And this last uh, issue will combine with these very clear references to uh, contemporary history and to the Second World War. Okay, uh, memories from an Italian home. This is just a short extract. It is taken from uh, Anpia, language of my choosing. This is one of the latest works in this uh, literary branch. Um, it is a punch in the stomach, at least for me, uh, as an Italian coming from the south. And um, it is a punch in the stomach for me, who never had. Um, the necessity to emigrate. I don't know what it was uh, that made life in my Italian home in Edinburgh in the post-war years so raw, so relentless, merciless and destructive, so uh, deadening to the spirit, so uh, to love and joy. It seemed that every area of one's life was a family affair to be considered, approved or not. The power of my home resided in the matriarch, my grandmother, and her son, Enrico, called Rico, both of whom monitored, allocated, punished, and schemed. My mother was a servant to their plans. The memories of those dark early years are of frustration at my powerlessness, of indignation at my mother's subservience, a childhood of fear, of physical violence. And I did not want to include uh, the episodes of physical violence that she includes in her narration. Um, we can obviously find some uh, explana explanations or justifications for such a, a difficult context uh, that um, uh, Anpia uh, lived in, and which was also the reason why at a certain moment in her life when she spent, after she spent a whole life here in France, paradoxically, um, she was an exchange student and she spent uh, um, um, a whole year uh, in Montpellier. After she came, she went back to Edinburgh, she wanted to take new directions and slowly, slowly take a distance from uh, the Italian migrant community. Uh, what are these justifications and these ideas? The, the, the difficult, the hard life that, they, that these people live, um, lived um, and had. Also, their um, um, low uh, cultural level. Most of them, of course, we're talking about the 1920s, most, most of them came from very remote areas, um, in uh, agricultural areas in Italy. Um, they have no education, and the impact with otherness was so destructive for them so that the level of tension um, uh, uh, was always very, very high. And from this point of view, um, uh, uh, it was a completely different atmosphere at home for, for Joe Pieri. He was writing, this is the very first work that he wrote, uh, published in 1997. So the Pieri family started a new life in Glasgow. And this is um, uh, um, what he is uh, recollecting, what he's remembering is something that happened in the, in the 20s. Uh, my father's work was that of a fish fryer in a family owned restaurant on the edge of the city centre. By the standards of the day, his weekly wage of three pounds was adequate, and each week, a few shillings would be set aside towards the day when he would be able to set up a little shop of his own, for, what, for that was the dream of every immigrant. A business of your own, a home of your own. So, completely different context from the point of view of, of um, his family dynamics, uh, but this is to, to give you an idea of how hard these people's life, uh, lives was. 
um, uh, I, I mean, the, the extract was too long and I had to cut it, but he speaks about a very long and tiring routine. Um, uh, um, uh, he speaks about two 12-hour um, uh, um, uh, 12 hours working in these uh, uh, restaurants. This is the um, the, the, the sector um, they, they were um, uh, they were employed in the catering industry uh, for obvious reasons. And uh, however, that was the uh, the the, uh, the main um, purpose to have a business of your own and a, and a home of your own. And. Another strong statement. This is uh, uh, like uh, I think uh, it has strong political implications in a sense, especially now. And I'm thinking about Italy. In retrospect, I suppose that in a sense we were the Pakistani immigrants of our day, but not quite accepted by our neighbours. Well, tolerated, but not quite accepted by our neighbours. We were aliens who gave services to the community in the form of cafe, cafes and fish and chip shops, which the locals themselves did not provide. Integration, however, was easier. The colour of our skins was the same as that of our neighbours. So um, this is to, uh, to, to show you how long the path towards integration was for these people. And paradoxically, everything became easier after the Second World War, because the war sort of um, made everybody equal, suffering, I mean, the level of destruction. Um, these people could finally could finally benefit from the um, the sacrifices that their predecessors had um, had done throughout um, those um, those years. Uh, and now history, history and the memories of uh, um, as uh, of the Second World War and also of themselves as internees. Uh, why is uh, um, uh, uh, the Second World War uh, 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 such an important um, issue in uh, this type of uh, in this type of production? Because it was a long and painful period for the Italian migrant community in the UK. The um, uh, uh, iconic date is the 10th of June, uh, 1940, when Mussolini declared war on France, obviously, and on Britain. Uh, however, the decisions that uh, um, um, Churchill took um, were devastating for the whole community. Uh, he issued the infamous order, Call of the Lot, to prevent the formation of a fifth colony in Britain, and all the members of the Italian, German, and Austrian communities were persecuted and marginalized. Uh, all those men, in particular, uh, between 16 and 70 years old of age, um, uh, um, years of age were arrested and interned on prisoners of war camps in Britain, the Isle of Man, Canada and Australia. It is a part of contemporary history that you will never read about uh, in uh, official historical records, neither in Britain nor in Italy. I can assure you that I learned about this specific aspect reading these, uh, um, these narratives. Lester Vini, Joe Pieri, Hector Emanuele were interned uh, respectively, were respectively interned in, um, uh, in, um, in Canada on the small island uh, in St. Helena near Montreal and on the Isle of Man between 1914 and 1943. Lercevini um, only stayed uh, on the Isle of Man for uh, six months. Joe Pieri uh, spent, was taken to Canada and spent there three long years. Uh, uh, Hector Emanuele was on the Isle of Man for two years, from, uh, from 1940 to 1942, and then they were all <coughs> released. Sorry. <coughs> and this is another um, forgotten tragedy 
apart from persecution, apart from uh, marginalization, apart from uh, restriction, forms of different forms of restrictions of individual liberty, uh, this was uh, the highest, the, 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 uh, the most terrible tragedy uh, in uh, that period. Uh, as you can see, this is, a, uh, this is a, uh, an important, uh, quite a big, huge sh um, ship. Well, uh, um, this is the, um, uh, a picture taken from the, from the period when it was a cruise ship. In 1941, where, uh, the, in, uh, uh, when it was not possible to travel for, for tourist uh, reasons, um, uh, this ship was transformed into a warship. On the 1st of July 1940, the Arandora Star, which was overloaded with internees, so the colour had already changed into um, grey, it was white, it, was, uh, it became grey, um, uh, uh, it left from Liverpool, uh, heading um, Canada. On the 2nd of July, there was not a Red Cross flag on this ship, um, uh, the German U-boat 47 torpedoed and sunk it. There were uh, over 800 passengers, Most, uh, the, the great majority, uh, majority of them died. 400 of these uh, um, losses were made of Italians. Of course, the Germans did not know that that ship was carrying uh, civilians, which was an utter the, um, which was an utter devastation for, for the Italian community because um, uh, m uh, uh, there were no family who had not been uh, hit and struck by, by this tragedy. Uh, of course, these memoirs uh, speak about uh, um, uh, the, 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 the pain that the community felt and they themselves felt because of such a big loss. However, um, as regards, uh, um, as regards uh, Lesser Vini, um, uh, um, uh, the, the title of his memoir is A Boy from Bardi, My Life and Times, dated 1994. Uh, in this uh, first chapter, in this um, uh, uh, chapter speaks about uh, um, uh, his arrest. At about 12 o'clock, there was a loud knock on the door, puzzled, I went down. There stood a sergeant and two constables. I'm afraid you, can't, you must come with us, he said. What are you talking about? Haven't you heard the news? We are rounding up enemy aliens. You may be away a while and bring a few things. By now the family was awake. Somehow I brought a few things into an old case. Don't worry, I said. I will take care. Now. The key word here is enemy, alien. This is the, the change, the sudden change uh, in status of uh, these uh, people who had been there for generations and who were immediately perceived as, um, as um, we can say, um, uh, uh, enemies and it was difficult for them to uh, accept such a sudden change. Few passages later, uh, he is at the police station after his arrest. He is waiting for um, the local police to, to, uh, to interview him. There are so many Italians, and then he says, um, I was uh, 26 years old, I had lived here for nearly 20 years. What about my Welsh friends? I had been to court twice to help the police as an interpreter. My years at school and in business. The bitter truth slowly dawned on me. I was still Italian, which means I was not integrated. I was proof that I was not part of the Welsh community. And technically, I was an enemy. Uh, another side of the story, another stage of the story, but this time um, again we have another Welsh, uh, Welsh Italian author, Hector Emanuele, a sense of belonging. Uh, he's 
uh, he has uh, been moved to the Isle of Man, and this is our map of the um, uh, Isle of Man with uh, Peverin, as you can see here. Well, this is for me. <laughs> Peverin. Um, uh, this is where he was interned. There were several um, uh, uh, camps, prisoner of war camps on the island. But this apparently was the most civilized he had been in. And uh, inmates were treated humanly. Uh, it was, in a way, almost a mini university. This is something, this last statement is something that he has in common, that he felt. Uh, um, uh, um, uh, uh, in, a, in a very clear way, which can also be found in um, uh, Joe Pieri's uh, um, writings. Um, this idea of being there and following a sort of university um, uh, course of study uh, depends on the level of exchanges um, uh, um, that these inmates were engaged in. I'm talking about um, experiences, I'm talking about knowledge, I'm talking about uh, uh, levels of expertise. Um, uh, it was something that at the end they were able to appreciate. But also resilience. What happened after the war? After the war they took different directions. Um, uh, Les Sabini became a regular teacher of foreign languages. Joe Pieri opened a new cafe uh, in Glasgow. It was a, a very popular cafe in the centre, not in the suburbs of uh, Glasgow. So his customers were, were a little bit different from uh, the ones that his uh, father um, uh, uh, served. Um, uh, Hector Emanuele left the catering industry and became an employee in a multinational corporation. And Pia became a high school teacher against the will of, his, uh, of, his fa of her family and an inspector of the Ministry of Education. Now she's retired and she's a very promising teacher, as uh, a writer, sorry. At the end of a long process, they were socially and culturally integrated in their home country because that was um, uh, their home country. Um, final conclusion from a certain point of view, an ideal conclusion um, from, uh, from Joe Pieri. Um, he has just arrived in, uh, uh, in Glasgow after his long period of internment um, and he um, uh, considers that for whatever reason the war seemed to add to have broadened attitude uh, attitudes and increased the people's tolerance uh, paradoxically after all that had happened for the first time in his life he began to feel welcome and a part of the society in which he lived so it was as i was saying as if the war had actually made everybody equal and that there was no difference between those who had different origins or those who were um, who were um, uh, uh, scottish uh, he opened this uh, cafe with his brother and he never, from that moment on, he never had the impression that his Italian background mattered in any way. Um, and this is um, a more recent tribute to Scotland by Anthea. Um, uh, um, she, um, she's so grateful. Uh, I have spoken to her um, in the last, um, in the, well, last, uh, Last May, yes, she, she, she held a seminar in Catania for, for my students and she um, kept on confirming that she, she's so grateful um, to Scotland for valuing different roots, different origins, difference in such a, uh, in such a um, uh, um, systematic way. In Scotland, in Scotland, roots are valued and the more diverse, the better. Um, Italian um, is now synonymous with flair and creativity. And I will go to this part here, no longer downtrodden, fearful, hopeful um, uh, and apologetic, we see pizzerias, panettone, 
Ely coffee and Gadja coffee machines as a sign of quality. This is a completely different face of Scotland to the one she, she was used to when she was young and um, uh, she is now uh, proud um, uh, of, uh, uh, of being, uh, um, uh, of being uh, um, uh, a Scots Italian. My conclusions, I have spoken about uh, um, uh, um, this uh, branch of uh, British uh, migrant uh, literature which is still uh, ignored by the academic community. 12 authors, 17, uh, 17 uh, works um, uh, um, and uh, family memories and the Second World War as uh, the, main, uh, uh, the main issues in uh, uh, these authors' production. They are hybrid, both from a formal and a linguistic point of view, and I would say that in post-Brexit times, uh, the authors' positive mes messages of courage and resilience have a strong cultural and I would also say political significance. And merci pour votre attention. <laughs>
on the, um, the implications, for example, of the, uh, the economic implications of the um, uh, um, unification of Italy. Italy was divided into several regions and then after a long process it was unified in 1860. Now every region had its own economic system. When in Rome took certain decisions and they decided to apply those decisions, those measures, to the rest of the country, that was uh, a, um, a tragedy. Because, the, uh, because, of course, the, the, uh, the especially agriculture was, was dealt in a completely different way and these farmers uh, started starving. That's why this period of, uh, um, of uh, mass migration, starting from mostly from agricultural areas, and then um, the, 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 the actual uh, periods, um, the, the, the most crucial periods were the, the, the early 1910s. Um, and um, the, 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 you know, the narratives finish, um, uh, well, in, yes, in the 1970s, I would say, if I consider the whole corpus, okay? Can I ask my second question? Yes, absolutely, um, please. Uh, being, uh, uh, focusing my, my research on, uh, on American literature, yeah. something struck me, the fact that you call them Scots-Italian, whereas in, in American English we would say uh, Italian-Americans or uh, uh, Mexican-Americans, but you say uh, Scots-Italian or, uh, or um, whatever, that really struck me. Could you clarify yeah, this? The one? question by Pascal Antonin is about the order of the objectives, the compound objectives, to qualify the migrant community. Because Pascal Antonin suggests that, uh, very, very rightly that in uh, America the order would be inverted. And that usually you would say African American or Italian American, whereas Manuela uh, used Scotch Italian putting the emphasis on the origin rather than the uh, welcoming or the, the migration yeah. destination. I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why and I've, I wanted to go back to the corpus, the actual corpus. Um, when I started uh, my research I used to write uh, Italian Scottish, Italian Welsh, but then I realized that the way they considered themselves was different. They, they considered themselves Welsh, Scottish, um, English. And if you, could, if you have a look um, at, uh, at, their, um, at the titles, Welsh Italian, um, in only in this case, Italian Scot, which is, because I know Ampia, which is quite strange, um, I would have expected her to write uh, uh, Scots Italian, but she wrote Italian Scot. Now, if we consider a level of uh, um, uh, um, uh, the, the, how sharp a critique is against uh, um, or towards uh, the Italians in the Italian migrant community, uh, well, this is quite strange because she's probably the only one who decided to, you know, um, uh, to detach from, uh, from her family and from their community. Another one who uh, probably had that type of problem with uh, um, uh, his Italian origin is actually um, uh, uh, Victor Spinetti, an actor, Welsh Italian actor, who writes in this uh, strictly confidential autobiography uh, that right from the beginning, he and his family stopped talking Italian. They wanted to be Welsh, 
They wanted to be integrated. They wanted to be um, uh, uh, recognised by um, uh, by the, the uh, by the Welsh community. So these are the, the only two cases um, when uh, there was this uh, very uh, controversial type of uh, relationship. In general, however, they 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 are um, well also Joe Pieri, but um, yeah. he has a different type of. Uh, of attitude, and also here the Scots Italian, the Scots Italians, no, recollections no. of an immigrant. Sorry, I mistyped. Oh, of yeah. an immigrant. The second, yeah, the first, the first one is an Italian Scots. Scot. Yeah, but this is the way they feel. They consider themselves. If you read the narratives um, at that stage, because they were, st they, they they all started writing um, uh, at that, um, when they were. Uh, retired, what they had finished with a specific part of their lives, um, uh, um, they, they, they were like uh, part of the community, but they, uh, they, were fe they felt now completely, fully integrated. So that's why I wanted to, to use um, uh, that um, order in the use of uh, the adjectives. Thank you very much. No, you're welcome, very, very welcome. Well, that's a, a very exciting question indeed, because I think it would, it would make a very nice uh, article only just looking at the order of the objectives throughout a, a longer period to look the the pattern. Yeah. Mm. Uh, this, this would be a fascinating small research yeah, project. Yeah, 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 mm. yeah, yeah. Mm. I would say so. Yes, please, uh, Cecil. Do you think there might be some more works to, to come? Or because of this sense of resilience, do you think the, the writing memoirs about what it means to be Italian, uh, of Italian origin in Britain, um, has, so has finished? So the question is uh, by Cecil Marshall who wonders if there will be many more books uh, coming in the near future from the well, I don't know, uh, the British Italian, the Italian British community, yeah, yes, yeah. <laughs> or if this uh, sort of uh, resilience that Manuela has just been talking about has sort of uh, provided a close to the necessity of writing uh, a collective memoir made of so many individual memoirs. Okay, thank you, Cecile, uh, for this question. Um, Okay, talking about uh, narratives or memoirs, um, uh, I can see, I mean, the, the, the most uh, original and most uh, um, uh, active uh, writer at the moment uh, is Ampia, um, but she has moved to other topics. Um, uh, for example, the, just to give you an idea, the latest uh, work she, she has published, uh, um, dating 2021, um, uh, um, is a Sweetness of Demons, which is a translation, a creative translation of Baudelaire's Le Fleur du Mal, also as a tribute to, um, uh, to her, um, to this French uh, side. Um, in her personality and in her uh, cultural background. So I don't think she will, go, she will ever go back. She mentioned um, uh, her um, uh, heritage um, uh, in, uh, um, 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 in a, a collection of essays uh, dating 2020, but uh, if I consider the other authors that I have uh, listed here, I would say that uh, we could probably expect something from Mary Contini. We could expect something from uh, Anne Marie Mambro. As regards uh, Anita Cari, Welsh Italian, I know she has a book ready always on these topics. She's just, she's just trying to find a, a publisher for, for this second part of her narration. Um, and uh, I would say that the other ones are um, um, too old just to continue. 
Uh, however, however, there is another side which is equally important. There is another side of uh, literary output from his point of view, because uh, drama is uh, like producing a lot of plays. And if you could consider how many, for example, rehearsals, not so many plays that are being um, put on stage um, in, Scot in Scotland and especially in Wales on the tragedy of the Arundel Star. So many. And um, uh, I don't know if I will continue because as uh, uh, Beatrice was saying, this is my first uh, research uh, on contemporary times. I, I generally work on uh, early modern and Victorian um, periods, uh, but, um, but this is so fascinating. And uh, the idea also of having uh, a direct contacts with these uh, with these um, authors. I mean, it's something that, especially during the pandemic, I can assure you that exchanging emails with these authors, I mean, it was like uh, um, exciting and it kept me alive, you see. So the, 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 in the future, I hope that I will be able uh, to um, uh, consider all these, um, uh, all these performances in my, um, as a sequel of uh, this uh, book that I need to write, uh, that I am writing. So, um, you know, once I finish that one, that will be another, another, uh, um, uh, another side. Thank you very much, Cecile. We have other questions? Yes? So they always wrote in English, never in their mother tongue? No. So the, the question is, uh, do these authors write always in English or do they sometimes write in Italian as well? No, no, no. They, um, they only uh, wrote in English. They only write in English. Um, uh, uh, <clears throat> I would say that the, um, the level of Italian is very, very basic, very, very poor. And um, uh, um, I, I mean, uh, Anne, for example, can speak, uh, is very fluent in Viticusa, the dialect um, uh, that was spoken by her grandmother and her mother. And you, you should see how she changes her tone of voice, her intonation. She, can, she becomes a completely different person when she speaks in dialect, um, uh, um, which is a little bit incomprehensible to me as a Sicilian. Um, but if you consider, for example, the number of um, errors and mistakes uh, in these narratives, I mean, they didn't even want to, uh, to correct those, uh, or to make sure that that was uh, uh, correct Italian. They just didn't mind. They, they just wanted to, uh, to write the way they were used to uh, seeing things written and the way they were used to, um, uh, uh, to, to, uh, to hearing. Uh, and, uh, you know, that was the, they, they would not be able, you see. Mm, just uh, uh, the idea of going beyond buongiorno, um, uh, which is buon and giorno, not just one word. Uh, I mean, it's like, uh, well, uh, the, 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 the only, when it comes to uh, prayers, for example, Catholic prayers, well, they are very, they are very uh, um, accurate. Yes, well, in that, yes, because it was by road. Now, most of them have left and they, they are not even uh, um, uh, ca fervent Catholic any longer. They've put everything into question. But, um, uh, but I would say that that is probably the most, uh, uh, the most accurate um, uh, Italian that they can uh, produce. Well, thank you very much. Yes, Pascal? Um, I have another question. Keeping in mind, I wonder why uh, this emigration uh, uh, to the UK, particularly you mentioned uh, 1860, mm -hmm. okay, the unification of Italy, 
okay? But um, 18, the 1890s were the period of massive, massive immigration in the United States. And uh, I wonder, how is it that they, they migrated to the UK and not to the New World, if I may say so? No, no, so the uh, next question by Pascal Antonin um, uh, asks about the, the comparison between the, the Italian moving to Britain as opposed to the Italians moving to uh, the United States. As uh, Manuela was saying, the uh, migration to Britain was mostly in the 1860s, at the moment of the unification of um, Italy, mm -hmm. whereas the migration to America was maybe a decade later. So did these people have a choice, and what made their, what, what decided them to go to Britain or to... Well, it's not exactly what you no? said, it's just okay. that the, the 1890 was a sort of a, a climactic period, as far as... Correct, a, a correct immigration yes. to the United States uh, mm -hmm. is concerned. So but the, it started earlier and continued. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, you're perfectly right. Uh, the majority of them went to the New World. So we're talking about groups. Um, um, if you consider, for example, um, Joe Pieri's parents, um, first, they immigrated to America. Then they decided to go back to Italy because they had been promised when the, when the, the First World War um, uh, broke out, uh, they were promised um, um, you know, possibilities in their own countries, a, bright, a brighter future in their own country in the wrong region, so they, they went back. He went um, uh, uh, to fight, he went to the front. When they went back, when he went back, I mean his father, and, uh, and um, uh, his wife told him that the situation uh, in, uh, um, in the hamlet um, uh, was always the same and that they had not been helped in any way so the promise um, had been uh, had not been kept uh, they decided to um, move to um, to Scotland because there were some people from Barga who were already there so that was the uh, sort of uh, chain migration phenomenon even in that case but talking about figures you're perfectly right in the 1890s was the period when there was the highest peak of migration and um, another important destination apart from america northern america apart from southern america argentina venezuela Brazil, but Argentina especially, was also France and Switzerland, because they only needed to cross the border. And consider that these people basically were traveling on foot. So they went from their hamlets up on the hills to Civitavecchia, which is the, the, the closest port to, to Rome, on foot, and they embarked to the New World. If they wanted to go to France because they had family and friends there, so they had reference points there, at that point they would go to Turin, it was in Turin that they could um, uh, um, uh, start the train journey, but it was short because going from Turin to Paris it took them very little time. The same for Switzerland. So the largest communities were um, in Europe were obviously France and uh, and um, uh, and Switzerland. There was also a group going to German, uh, and then there was this community in uh, the, 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 the highest, uh, I mean, in the, in the largest urban areas in uh, Britain. But that, what we're talking about figures, and this is a smaller percentage, you see? 
So you're perfectly right. Yes, Michael. Um, just a sort of methodology question. Um, how did you create the list of authors? Did you have a database? Did you have an idea? I mean, it's hard to figure out who the population is of authors that you're interested in. So I'd be curious to hear how you did that. So the next question by Michael Stamboulis is about methodology of uh, the, the, the corpus. Yes. How did uh, Manuela assemble a corpus? Um, uh, of course, I had included um, uh, these uh, these pieces of information in uh, the, the the first version of my presentation, and I spoke to. Fortunately, I spoke to to Beatrice, and she said, "Oh, you have to be shorter." Um, but then I'm happy that you're that you're asking this question. I mean, it was the the highest part, the the, the, the most difficult part, the hardest part. Um, uh, it seems quite easy, but it was not, and you could understand. Um, uh, uh, okay, what I started from? I started from um, uh, a very small research carried out by a colleague based uh, in the, um, uh, um, at the University of Cardiff who was writing about uh, Joe Pieri, Mary Contini, Scots Italians, and who had um, uh, never worked on Welsh, incredibly, quite incredibly, well, never worked on the Welsh Italian side. So um, uh, I, I saw you know, just exchanging emails that there was a, a lecturer of Italian based in Swansea who, whose PhD thesis was on the, um, uh, uh, on the Italian side, on the Welsh side, sorry. And I started trying to, um, uh, to, to see if uh, um, uh, there was still trace of these narratives, and I had to be in. I put. It, um, uh, I, uh, I contacted. Uh, I wrote to uh, this lecturer of Italian language based in Swansea, and she was so kind, and she gave me this uh, um, uh, uh, this uh, first narrative by Les Servini, a boy from Bardi. Okay. At a certain moment, I became. Uh, I decided that I wanted to know more. I started, you know, googling, just googling, and I found that there was a society <coughs> of uh, uh, Italian, uh, British Italian immigrants working on uh, on um, uh, uh, the historical side and keeping those memories alive. They had so many uh, members, but the president was Terry Colpi, who was, uh, who, who was the, the author of this seminal um, uh, uh, monograph, The Italian Factor, she's a historian, she's uh, working at uh, St. Andrews in uh, Edinburgh, um, and who, uh, who was so excited at this idea of uh, me trying to know more about the literary side, because I don't want to, to, to compete with anybody. I am uh, um, a specialist in um, uh, literary studies, so this is my area. So once she realized that I was not trying to say something, you know, then uh, I got help from her, and she gave me this uh, uh, list of uh, this list of uh, uh, possible authors. Uh, but there were also uh, uh, on this list there were also um, uh, English writers who were married, who are married to um, to members of the Italian. Uh, of the Italian migrant community, and who wanted to um, to value 
uh, their experience, to pay a tribute to those experiences. So if I have to consider the, the whole corpus that's made of 14, 14 authors, not 12, not 12, and 19 works. But on this occasion, I wanted to exclude those two writers, who are not professional writers anyway, because, um, uh, because I wanted to consider their direct, these authors' direct descent. And I think that this is the only type of criterion, possible criterion in this case. Because if I consider other uh, works written on the Italian community, that will be like, uh, you know, um, uh, uh, a sort of, well, a, a, a sea, an ocean of information and of uh, narrative, because everybody's writing about, um, about the Italian community in the, uh, in the Anglo-American context. See, so I had to to be very very careful. And uh, um, if I consider, for example, the the canon, the more established canon of Italian American uh, literature, uh, Italian Canadian literature, Italian Australian literature, which is something established where uh, there is a, a much longer research. Well, they generally consider the descent. So this is the criterion I have considered. I know that there are so many people writing about, uh, about uh, that community, but uh, I was um, interested in giving you an idea of those people who had direct contacts with uh, the community, who were part of that community, to see what also the, the, the um, the standpoint when writing about certain issues. I don't know if, I'm, if I've answered my, um, uh, my question and uh, I don't know if it's acceptable. I mean, I'm also here to, um, to, to, to get feedback from you because this is my research. I mean, it is new research and my first research in contemporary um, on contemporary times. So um, I'm here also to ask for advice, you see. Yes. Okay, so it's very interesting. Um, and so one of the questions that comes to mind then is, um, what's the role of immigrant community organizations, like the one that you mentioned, in engaging in forms of gatekeeping, in deciding who is or is not a legitimate member of the community? Um, and so when you use criteria, and you're, you have to use criteria, of course, we then would be studying everything simultaneously, exactly. and that's impossible but criteria based, say, on some kind of biological or genetic relationship mm -hmm. to one's ancestry, then creates a corpus that represents a certain kind of person um, on the one hand. And on the other, it also begs the question of um, the level of integration or dilution, say someone who does have some kind of British, Italian heritage, but doesn't write anything about Italian topics and doesn't identify as Italian, British, or whatever, um, and who doesn't affiliate with the migrant organization, but who does have some kind of biological or genetic. Yeah. Um, okay, so the next question is by Michael Stamboulis. I just explained to Manuela that Michael is a sociologist. Yeah. Uh, basically, so the, yeah, yeah, this yeah. question is very interesting. Yeah, because absolutely. Of his, uh, academic background. Mm -hmm. And the question is about the relationship um, of um, migrant organization mm -hmm. as gatekeepers and definers yes. of who's in and who's out, basically. Um, uh, I have um, had contacts with uh, two associations. Um, I am a member of uh, one of them. Um, I would say that they are quite inclusive, for obvious reasons. Uh, they're not that strict. Um, they they are not. Uh, they their interest. They, they the main um, uh, priority is to uh, make the community visible. So it doesn't really matter if you are a scholar uh, coming from. Uh, 
uh, from Germany and working on the Italian on the Italian community, you will be welcome anyway. Also, as regards, uh, for example, um, the two authors that I have excluded um, at this stage, even though, for example, I can tell you that in the first two chapters of, of this book I'm writing, I have mentioned them. I mean, these two uh, narratives are mentioned, especially one of them because it is specifically on the Arundel star. So speaking about the way history was uh, um, actually recounted, I, I wanted to include that type of narrative. So uh, from that point of view, I was not strict. I was strict on this occasion. But uh, um, um, at, a, at a certain moment, however, I will have to be strict. Um, because if I want to um, uh, to create a um, uh, um, a sort of uh, appendix collecting the most significant works, uh, the, I mean the most significant passages of the the works that have that you consider significant, uh, that you consider um, important in the on, in this research, well, of course, I will have to be strict for obvious reasons, but. You know, um, as regards uh, as regards uh, these um, these um, uh, um, associations, I mean, they, these societies they are very inclusive, and they are open to anybody coming from Italy, um, anybody uh, coming from other countries, but working on uh, on uh, on, um, on those issues, those topics. So I hope that I have um, um, answered your question based on my. Um, of my recent experience, because now I have all these contacts um, uh, and I take part in webinars and I take part in discussions, debates, which is so um, interesting. Um, but um, it is something that I started doing uh, uh, last year during the pandemic, and again, it was like fantastic. <laughs> So we are happy to to hear that the pandemic yes. had some positive effects after all for yes, some of definitely. us. Yes, definitely. Well, thank you so much. Uh, this makes me think I'm already considering the next book that would be like an anthology. Yeah, which is, yeah, is yeah. This is a more... project, another project. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. Well, this is certainly another project, also for for students who would like to uh, uh, to work on. Uh, uh, or to need to work on these issues, um, I think that's uh, a good uh, um, a good um, instrument um, for them. I have um, a question about this literary hybridity that you you mentioned in the in the form of the, the books that you have encountered, including newspapers, clippings, and photographs, and recipes, and all sorts of things, and yes. that made me think of scrapbooks. You remember the old Victorian scrapbooks? And, and I thought, well, this is so British, isn't it? Yeah. So isn't the, the shape itself a mm -hmm. sign of maybe their acculturation? I should think so. I should think so. Um, um, I, I was thinking while you were um, uh, posing your question um, that I had an exchange with, um, with a colleague who is uh, uh, specialist in American um, in American literature, and um, uh, and uh, there was this uh, uh, student who was defending his PhD thesis on uh, um, uh, on American Italian uh, uh, Italian American uh, <laughs> uh, literature, and um, uh, I'm, uh, I'm I just asked them if they in, uh, I mean both my colleague and uh, the, the uh, PhD candidate. If uh, um, uh, these uh, um, uh, these narratives were um, uh, um, were rich in uh, diverse materials, and he said, but no, because those are professional writers," which you know made me think that I was actually that I needed to consider also that type of uh, uh, that type of aspect, and I started you know looking into the cultural and uh, back, uh, cultural background, also their occupations. I said, well, maybe I have to, that was at the very beginning, so maybe it's right, I mean, I have to, uh, to research on that. 
And, um, well, maybe yes, or maybe not, in the sense that um, there is so much of uh, uh, that part of the story talking about the Victorian period, you know, um, uh, the, uh, that was the period when it all started. Mm. And it may have had an impact on um, the, the way of building these works. Um, they, they obviously uh, made some, um, did some research on, uh, on um, uh, also on, uh, on that period of time. And um, so I would not exclude this possibility. Well, thank you. And uh, I was also intrigued by what you said was the end of your presentation. You said uh, after the war, it seems that things were much better, that resilience was the new form of accepting to be there, and people were better integrated. And I was wondering, uh, do you think uh, that the victory mm -hmm. uh, was, uh, I mean, the victory of Britain uh, during World War II uh, contributed to that? Was it uh, like a national patriotism that stemmed from the victory? Or maybe was it due to the Labour government, the post-war Clement Attlee government that you know, helped uh, these uh, communities be better accepted? Um, I can, uh, um, I can uh, only remember about a passage um, taken from uh, one of these narratives. I think it was, um, uh, um, I think it was um, Hector Emanuele who um, uh, recounted his post-war years and the moment when he arrived back, um, uh, uh, back in, uh, uh, in uh, Cardiff and there were so many people um, who were um, enthusiastic, people who didn't know him, who were enthusiastic about uh, the idea of him being uh, Italian because they had had such a um, positive experience as ex-soldiers when they had liberated Italy and people were so happy. Um, uh, um, and they had, uh, had this uh, very uh, important, precious human experience. So, because he was Italian, because he had this uh, uh, clear um, uh, Italian descent um, uh, um, uh, origin, uh, I mean, it was like, uh, it was like something that uh, um, made those first contacts, uh, encounters, easy. So um, that's an aspect. I mean, the fact that British um, people went uh, to Italy and they they could they could understand more, even though they were obviously um, uh, um, the world the world was obviously there um, uh, um, on a uh, posi in a position of superiority because they were the liberators basically. And uh, the Italians were the ones who needed to be liberated. So uh, I would say that that helped. I don't know if uh, uh, if uh, politics actually um, uh, made uh, this part of the process s smoother. I don't know. I well, that's a, that's a good question. I will uh, I will see into that. But um, from a, from a um, uh, more um, uh, um, uh, human point of view, I would say that uh, uh, this is also what they, um, uh, what they write about. They actually wanted to, um, uh, to consider that the war had been um, uh, had meant uh, devastation, despair um, for, for everybody. And you may be Scottish living in Scotland, you may be Italian living in Scotland, you may be French living there, everybody was the same because 
the, the experience, the war, uh, such a such a terrible experience makes everybody equal. So I think that was more uh, to see at a, hum at a, in a human level. And uh, but I will I will see into that. Thank you. Uh, yes, Cecile. In your conclusion, you mentioned Brexit, and I was wondering if these authors uh, have been vocal in the Brexit debate or not. So the next question by Cecile Marshall concerns the the Brexit debate and its possible impact on the production of uh, Italian British uh, authors. Um, again, again, um, the, the, the most um, original and uh, the most promising author, Ampia, she mentions Brexit. Um, both in language um, of my choosing and uh, keeping away the spiders essays on breaching barriers 2021 um, uh, uh, of course she is scottish so you can imagine what a political um, a view can be um, uh, and uh, this is something that she kept on repeating every time we met and even during the seminar that she held um, uh, for my students in, uh, actually not in Catania, there were some from Catania, but also in Ragusa, the, the time we were teaching um, uh, in, in Ragusa. So um, uh, I would say that uh, it is an issue, and it is uh, um, the reason why um, um, they, um, they cannot um, uh, uh, they cannot approve of the British government um, uh, government's decision. So that's quite obvious. Of course, if you uh, if you go to um, well the the the, the all uh, um, the all list um, uh, of authors, I will tell you that, uh, for example, um, Mary Contini will be of the same. Uh, the same, uh, will have the same position, will share the same view. Um, she is, uh, <clears throat> she is um, uh, the director of the um, uh, historic and very popular um, uh, uh, delicatessen, Italian delicatessen shop and restaurant, Volvona and Crolla in uh, Edinburgh, and Terry Colpi um, was telling me that she is uh, um, invited by the Queen when she is uh, um, uh, uh, when she is in Balmoral um, uh, because she is a champion of uh, Italian culture and cuisine um, uh, in uh, um, in Edinburgh. So I would imagine I would imagine that her views <laughs> um, are exactly the same as Anpia's. Because um, uh, you know the reason why uh, she was the one who included recipes, mm. um, because she she wanted to um, uh, to keep you know the, the readers' interests um, uh, interest alive, um, uh, but in Italy, in Italian culture, in Italian cuisine. So you have these. Um, I couldn't. Uh, include them in my PowerPoint, but uh, you, you have the Italian. Ah, yes, of course. Um, I'm curious to see them. Yes, I'll see if I if I can find the the older version. Let's see. Well, maybe I have uh, just. Uh, oh, I I've got it. Because I didn't want to go. It was like 50, um, 15 uh, uh, slides, which was, that's why you probably didn't understand why I was working so much on this presentation because, you know, it was like. Uh, clip, clip, clip. Yes, 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 cut, cut, cut. And, uh, but that was my starting point. Uh, it may not be very interesting, but long version. <laughs> there it is. So I think you, you need yes. to get out from uh, the first presentation. Well, uh, 
What about if I... Oh no, because I have to get... Mm, okay, but this is something I can do very easily. But anyway... Um, oh, I'll hold the microphone. Yes. Um, yes, what I wanted to say is that um, you basically um, you have... Uh, this is... Uh, okay, this is the, the, the other one, and uh, I have to pr basically have to download it. Basically, you have this uh, title of these recipes in uh, dialect. <laughs> uh, this dialect from uh, the Picinisco area, the, uh, southern Lazio. I hope it's. Uh, Okay, um, let's see if I can share it with you. I don't know, maybe so. I don't know why it's not uh, working. It should be here. Well, um, what I can do is... And then you have the... the it should be. Well, let's see if I can... Uh, and it's the same. No, it doesn't matter. Yeah, no, I mean, I'm so sorry. I'm so no, no, sorry. it doesn't matter. Yeah. But anyway, um, uh, uh, and then you have all the instructions in English. So you have these very... And the, the good thing about these recipes is that they are very... Um, uh, very simple ingredients, also very cheap, because it was that was the way people cooked uh, in those uh, in those old days, and uh, these instructions are very easy, so anybody could actually uh, prepare these uh, recipes. So um, I'm really sorry I couldn't uh, I couldn't actually uh, show you all these. Uh, um, uh, all these ones, no, no, impossible. I've just uh, clicked uh, only so many times. Sorry. We, maybe we can continue. Uh, yes. Uh, sometimes with these keys, but that's mm -hmm. not that's no important. Thank you yeah. very much. Uh, I can't wait to, to, to see it. It must be so interesting to look yeah. at. Uh, I have a question about the reception of these authors in Italy. Is their works known in Italy? Do you think they will be translated? Are they read? Are they yes. distributed? Yes. And Pia, sorry, bye-bye. Uh, and Pia um, was, um, uh, um, I mean, uh, was awarded the prestigious, and I can, I can tell you that it is a prestigious prize. It's called, um, uh, it's called the Flaiano Prize um, for Italian Studies. And uh, that was in uh, 2018, and uh, um, her language of my choosing was translated into Italian. Ah. So um, it is, um, it is, um, uh, uh, it has been translated into Italian. And as regards Joe Pieri, there is uh, uh, there is um, uh, a translation, an Italian translation of the Scots Italians' recollections of an immigrant. Um, which is um, um, which is a um, uh, um, piece of non-fiction, but which was uh, um, uh, um, very well received in Barga, which is the little town where um, uh, where he, uh, he was originally from. So he was like a, a, an ambassador from that point of view, um, a sort of bridge. Between uh, between the community in Barga and the community in uh, in um, uh, Glasgow, so um, uh, yes, I would say that there are two translations. Mm -hmm. um, questions, students? Maybe a couple more questions, or just one more question. Yes, there was something intriguing with um, uh, this quote you gave us, we were the Pakistani immigrants of our day. And I was wondering uh, if this is something uh, widespread, if this is something you have found in other 
uh, in other authors, and is that something that is shared with other migrant communities that mm -hmm. um, they have more in common? Thank you for this uh, for this uh, question, which gives me gives me the chance to uh, sort of make a distinction between uh, the production um, within the Scottish community. Uh, Welsh community and English community. Um, I would say that the most interesting works are by um, Scots Italian uh, writers because they are the ones who um, actually wanted to portray the sense of uh, um, frustration and uh, margina uh, marginalisation um, uh, that they were uh, forced into. Um, and um, um, you will never find something that hard in Welsh Italian accounts. They tend to have a, a, a more positive um, vision of their path of integration. They speak. They will speak about how hard life was. Uh, how difficult it was to uh, progress, but they will never um, make such uh, strong statement, statements. Um, so uh, I would say that uh, if you want to have a clear idea of uh, what um, this process was for the Italian community, you'd better um, investigate um, the, that, that section of uh, the, the, the corpus. Um, you know, like for me, um, reading a language of my choosing was a punch in the stomach. I felt ashamed as an Italian, as an Italian from the south, the deep south, as an Italian who had never had the necessity uh, to um, uh, um, uh, uh, to go to to actually um, uh, move from uh, where I was born, but that was um, uh, if you think of the, the the final part of the process, and you can see uh, the, the the richness, the even even just from a from a human point of view, you will see that. They are like extraordinary human beings, extraordinary, and I'm so, um, so, you know, not not envious because of course it is a positive envy, uh, but um, uh, I admire them so um, greatly for what they have achieved, really. Well, thank you very much, Manuela. I think we can all give a big round of applause. For the